Your mind is completely clear and wide open right here and right now. Nothing needs to change for that to be the case. And to identify this wide open clear mind, just stop thinking for a moment. Allow that intelligence just to expand out infinitely. There's no end to how far and how wide this intelligence is. It's like a completely cloudless sky. We can't find a limit or a boundary or an edge. And this intelligence is continually pouring forth all of this display that we experience. So anything that we can describe or experience, we can just call data. So there's this intelligence that is looking through your eyes right now, listening to these words, feeling yourself sat in the chair, pouring forth all of this display of data. Everything that you can think, everything you can feel, everything you can sense, <clears throat> everything you can experience, contained within this vast expanse of intelligence that's always opening, never static, this dynamic display, pouring forth all of your experience. So in the Balanced View training, there's a very simple practice to get to know the actual nature of our minds. Because we've learned so much about who we are. We've learned all of these things about the nature of reality and the nature of our mind, the nature of our identity. But it's actually about time that we checked out for ourselves what is the nature of that reality? What is the nature of our mind? What are all of these assumptions that we've taken on board as we made our way through life. And I know for me when I came to this training and participating particularly in the 12 empowerments, it was an amazing opportunity to clarify and to become clear on what all of these ideas and belief systems were that I'd adopted as I'd gone throughout my life, as I'd lived my life, spoken to people, had experiences. Accumulating this set of ideas and belief systems that allowed me to try and understand what was going on and make sense of the world and make sense of my place within it. And um, until I got to this training, I'd never actually questioned what these ideas were nor where they came from. I'd simply assumed that things were a certain way. I'd assumed that I was a separate individual, somehow caught up within this body, that my intelligence was somehow here between my ears and that there was a world out there and there were lots of other little two-legged intelligences running around somewhere over there far away from where I was even when I was close to them physically the sense of separation and the sense of loneliness and the sense of isolation um, could be very overwhelming and very crippling and so I see that I live my life based on these ideas and based on these assumptions that I'd never even questioned. And I can see clearly the results of living my life in that way. And the place where I could see that most obviously was in my own life and in my own relationships. In the way that with, for example, intimate relationships, I had thought that when I found the perfect partner, that that sense of isolation and that sense of loneliness and that sense of meaninglessness would disappear. And when you meet someone for the first time and you fall in love, they do all disappear. You know, the birds are singing and you're walking hand in hand, skipping down the beach and everything's lovely and you love everyone and you love the world and you love each other and, and it's all wonderful, it's a fantastic feeling. But the only problem with that is that it doesn't last. It can't last because the nature of all data, all descriptions is exactly the same. They shine forth from open intelligence, but all of them resolve naturally. Like the knot in a snake just undoes itself, completely effortlessly. There's no way that you can hold on to any perception. Absolutely impossible all of them part of this seamless flow of experience, including the feelings of bliss, including the feelings of isolation and loneliness. 
We've simply been trained to focus in on these descriptions and then to live our life and make our decisions based on what these descriptions seem to tell us. And yet we ignore the fundamental nature of all of the descriptions. We give them this independent nature. So this feeling of loneliness or isolation comes up and I focus in on it and I try and work out, well, well why is it there? What's the, what's the reason for it? What's the cause of it? What can I do to get rid of it? I don't like this feeling, it shouldn't be there. I know, I'll find a partner. I'll find a partner and that, that sense of isolation and loneliness will, will disappear forever. Because that's what I've seen in the movies. And yet that's not the reality that we experience. The fundamental nature of reality is this self-release of the here and now. <coughs> Effortlessly self-releasing. And yet somehow we think that we can have a particular experience and hold on to that, fix everything in place, that feeling of love and bliss. So we're struggling with this continually changing flow, giving ourselves a hard time because it doesn't look the way that we think it should look, the way that we've been taught it should look, the way that we assumed it should look. But here we're given a chance to actually get real and see what is actually going on. You know, what is the nature of reality? Not an assumption, but looking directly and fiercely in your own experience. What's going on right here and right now? Are all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations naturally resolving? Flowing on by like a line drawn in space? Not leaving a trace in that space? And yet what we've been doing is trying to uh, rearrange this space so that we can have more space. It's a completely futile and fruitless task. So instead what we're given here is a very simple instruction of taking short moments of allowing the data just to flow on by and to be exactly as it is and identifying the open intelligence that is the basis of all of the data, of your experience, every single one. And the results of this are very, very profound. And again, the first place that you see that is in your own experience with your own relationships. And what I saw was that my relationships shifted. So rather than having friends that I thought should provide me with something, should give me a sense of security, or give me a sense of belonging, or give me a sense of worth, rather than having parents that I thought should love me in a certain way, shouldn't have certain ideas about me. Having intimate partners that should make me feel in a certain way and should be able to sustain that feeling of love and support. All of those ideas were seen for exactly what they were and I began to see how limiting basing my relationships on these ideas was. And I began to see that when I allowed everything to flow on by, what I'd been looking for in all of these relationships and all of these descriptions was found to be already present. I've been looking for a sense of belonging, a li looking for a sense of stability, a sense of understanding, a sense of complete open-heartedness with everything and everyone. And it was there all along. I'd just never given myself the opportunity to recognise it. And so with this first short moment of just completely allowing everything to be as it was, that was recognised, that innate stability, that innate clarity, that innate understanding. All of us have the power to understand the nature of reality. We all have this intelligence. And so what we do here is we learn how to tap into that, to train it up, to emphasise that intelligence rather than all of the ever-changing descriptions. Now what I saw was that when I based my relationships on the ever-changing descriptions, then the relationships were fraught with tension, with conflict, with disappointment, um, with violence in many different aspects, either mental, emotional, or physical, playing out all of my data on, within, within all of these relationships. And I found it very frustrating because that's not the way that I wanted to live. And yet I couldn't seem to help myself. I seemed to be a victim to these thoughts and emotions that would come up when I was relating with people, particularly in intimate relationships. You know, jealousy. I didn't want to feel jealous, but there was the jealousy. And I would behave in these incredibly bizarre ways. 
because of this jealousy, feeling completely insecure in this relationship that I'd got into to try and find security. So, to recognise this first of all on a personal level is key. Because that means that we begin to see that this is our responsibility to do something about this. And we begin to see that we do have the responsibility, but more than that, the capacity to take responsibility for our data and for our relationships, to see how we want them to look. Do we want them to be based on all of these hopes and fears, judgments, criticisms, disappointments? Or do we want to, them to be based on complete love and appreciation of the other person? And when I began to see that this was something that was playing out for me on this personal level, again and again and again, in all of these relationships, then it began to dawn on me that this is the same mechanism that is playing out all around the world, between groups of people, between individuals, between countries. So I feel this way, I don't like the way that I'm feeling, this is your fault, so therefore I'm going to, I'm going to lock you in concentration camps and try and annihilate you because I don't like the way that I feel and it's your fault. Now this is a very, very extreme example of what it means to be a victim of your data, to not take responsibility for it. But this is exactly the same mechanism that was playing out for myself in my relationships. So unless I can start taking responsibility for that, then nothing is going to change in the world at large. Absolutely nothing. So thankfully, there is this support network that has allowed me to become completely confident and completely familiar with the nature of reality, with the nature of my mind, with the nature of this opening intelligence. To really align myself with that reality, which is also a reality of complete open-hearted love. Because when I can allow everything just to flow on by, then I have nothing to guard, nothing to defend. There is this complete openness, defencelessness, where I can embrace and meet everybody from a place of just complete ease and wonder, total appreciation and joy, in an absolutely uncontrived way. This way of relating is innate, it's natural to us. We're just tapping into that naturalness and seeing that who we are, exactly as we are, with everything about us, is already perfect for us to get to know ourselves and to get to know everybody else at the same time. So there's this ever-increasing sense of understanding and clarity and an ever-increasing sense of being able to take responsibility and to decide how we want to live our lives and what kind of society and world we want to create. I mean, this is so empowering. You know, I felt helpless at the state of the world and I had all of these people that I blamed for it. But I began to see in this, it was me that made this choice about how I wanted to live my life. Then I was just as big a hypocrite as the, all the other hypocrites that I was very happy to point out to people. It had to start with me. And to see that how important that stand you can make is, and how well you're supported in it, in the Balance View training, in the Four Mainstays, it's just incredible. Because it's really empowering. From being helpless, you suddenly become this, this fearless warrior of love complete pioneer at this, you know, absolutely certain that you're capable of taking responsibility and of shining this bright, clear light of love and understanding in whatever situation you find yourself in. Because in whatever situation you find yourself in, you can rely on open intelligence. You can rely on your own innate loving wisdom. And that's what we're training up here, getting used to that. No one ever told me this. It's like, no wonder it took a little while to get used to this. All of these ideas that I began to see that I had about myself, <coughs> not one of them said that I was an exalted being that had access to the knowledge of the universe and was able to find the most perfect solution in any situation. All of the ideas, all of the books, all of the people that I'd spoken to, no one had ever told me that. No one. I was doing the best with what I knew. So all of that sense of guilt and blame and judgment, I was doing the best with what I knew. 
But now I know something more. Now I know something different. Now I have access to a, a, an education in the nature of mind. Where I can really begin to contribute to life. Now I knew I could contribute. I knew I could do that. That got lost along the way somehow. But that knowledge, that certainty was always there. And um, my gratitude and my appreciation for what I receive from the Balanced View training just continues to increase because I see that there's no end to this potency that I can train up in myself. And that potency, with the support of the mainstays, is always guaranteed to be of benefit to all. Without the support of the mainstays, it's so easy to get sidetracked into various data streams about open intelligence or about benefit and actually you're just getting caught up in one of the ideas about that rather than the complete spontaneous expression of that. And that's the kind of support that I want you know, to keep me aligned with this reality and to stop wandering off in all kinds of different directions that it is easy to wander off in because that's the way we've been trained. Bringing yourself back to reality again and again and again, one short moment at a time. Just keep showing up. It's as simple as that.